How y'all doing? Hello. Welcome back to Y'all Hearing This, the podcast edition. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, woo, woo, woo. My name is Honeybee, or you can call me B. And my name is Kay. Thank you guys so much for coming back and joining us. Yes. Oh, I love it. I know. So we had an amazing video, couple of videos for our reactions for mm-hmm. this week's theme. You definitely probably saw us laughing our faces off mm-hmm. and going a little crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of drag going on. Yeah, there was and some dancing. There was some there dancing. Was some clapping, there was some snapping. Right. There, there was, was some, some praising Jesus. Right. There was everything. There was everything. And then we also had a lot of laughs, a lot of side eyes, yeah. a lot of questions. Yeah, 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 we did. But... It was absolutely amazing. And of course, we're talking about our theme for this week, which is Broke Broke Ass ass Holiday. holiday. So what does that mean? It basically means... It could mean anything, actually. I know, we, we took we it to mean totally different Totally different things. things. So yeah. We took that title and went way it different could, ways. Right. It could, be, <laughs> uh, it could be about not having enough money to buy gifts. It could be about, you know... <laughs> <laughs> not getting clearing and not getting like you know what I'm saying publishing and all that for the rights so to record certain use songs. Certain, uh, certain other songs that you yeah. then wrote, right? And recorded. Mm-hmm. Well then, so my pick for this week was the incomparable, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the Queen of Christmas. She really is. She really is, and there's a lot of people that say she isn't, but. She is. No. Miss Mariah Carey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the song that I chose is Jesus, Oh, What a Wonderful Child. Now, the reason I chose this song <laughs> is because it made me think about, and I said it in the reaction video, that it, um, growing up, especially in a, a, you know, a religious family or, you know, my, specifically speaking on my terms, in a black family, um... There were times where I wanted to be like, ooh, like, I want to get this gift and I want to do that because my love language is gift giving yeah, and spending too. time. Me too, me too. And so I definitely inherited that from my mom and I love gift giving. But especially in this day and age, still coming out of a pandemic, you know what I mean? Sometimes motherfuckers are not the money. Like, what? And there were times growing up where I would you know, go to my mom and dad and be like, I want to get, you know, my friend this, and I want to do this, I want to do that. And they were just like, um... No. What money did you do your chores? It was a no. There was... No. Did you, did you did you go like babysit? Like how how are you getting this money for right, your presents for your right. friends? It's just like I said in our Halloween video. Like we never passed out kid who passed out bill money? Who passed out the car payment? That's the electric bill for a Kit Kat. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm-mm. Okay, so I used to always hear, and uh, you know, and a lot of my friends we used to talk about this in the test that, you know, coming from a religious family, they'd be like, "You better remember the reason for the season. It ain't about gifts. It ain't about this. It's about Jesus." Okay, <laughs> so. I decided to go when I thought a broke ass holiday. It's like, well, you just tell that person if they, you know, if they didn't, you can't get somebody. Just be like, listen, I'm here. The reason, listen, remember the reason for the season, Jesus. That's right. That's okay, right. That's right. like that's what you got to say. Okay, right. so I chose this song because it just it was funny to me, like in that term, and it just made me like remember all those times I would hear that, or my friends would tell me stories of people telling them that. So. I chose Mariah Carey's Jesus Oh What a Wonderful Child from her legendary album, Merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. Now, there's not a lot on the song itself. It says Jesus Oh What a Wonderful Child is a Christmas song performed by American singer and songwriter Mariah Carey as the 10th and final track from her Merry Christmas album. And the song itself was produced by Loris Holland, Mariah Carey, and Walter Afanasi. And I'm um, trying to see the background vocals feature Melanie Daniels, um, Sean Ray Price, and Kelly Price, um, and Mariah Carey. And it was recorded at the Hit Factory in New York City um, back in 1994. 
Now, I'm going to give you guys a little... That's all they had on the actual song. But just yeah. to give you an idea about the album, um, Merry Christmas is Mariah Carey's first Christmas album and fourth overall. The album features both covers and original songs for the holiday season. Although the album is a Christmas sound, it still blends R&B and gospel. The record peaked at number three on the Billboard 200 um, and it charted all over the world. Uh, all I Want for Christmas is You, Joy to the World, and Oh Holy Night were released as singles for the album. All I Want for Christmas is You has become a staple in the Christmas music, in Christmas music, as it's one of the best selling um, Christmas songs and has charted every year since its release. Yeah. Which. It's like a juggernaut. You cannot stop it. You cannot you stop it. You're going to hear it 10 times. Right. And you know what? Like, I know some people, like, hate it, but I really don't. Like, don't get me wrong. If I heard it, like, five times in a day, I'd be like, all right. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. But I love it. I love it. It's right. It's a good song. Right, it's right, right. It's a catchy-ass right. song. You sing. You know you sing along right. with it. I do. Period. Um, and in a, it says, in general, the album is the best-selling Christmas album um of all time and has sold 14 million copies worldwide oh is one of the best-selling albums yeah. of all time um it's certified five times platinum in the u.s double platinum um overseas and is the fourth best-selling album ever in japan by a western artist oh, wow. and That's it's cool. six times platinum by the aria um also kind of like i just i don't know if you guys know this and if you do you 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 know me then you know that i am a lamely mariah carey is the first artist that i ever chose to invest my ears and my heart and my mind to mm -hmm. when i was a kid and this album had come out a year before i discovered mariah carey oh, okay so when this album when i got into this album i used to play it out play it out play it out and then so obviously doing research and looking into it mariah carey actually had no desire to make a christmas album because right. she was technically three albums in and she had the MTV Unplugged. And so this would have been, she was starting to record her fourth album, which um, during that time period in the 90s, Tommy Mottola, her husband at the time and head of her label, used to make her release an album every year. Mm -hmm. And so when it came time to start doing something, they were like, we want you to do a Christmas album. And she was like, Christmas albums are done when you're towards the end of your like height or Christmas albums are done when you Cash are a season, yeah, it's like you're a seasoned artist. So she's like, I'm new still, like, yeah. you know what I mean? But Tommy, regardless of how you feel yeah. about him, he knew what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And he had her do this and she had no desire, but she went into the studio and she said she recorded it during the summer, which is what a lot of artists yeah, do. Yeah, you have to, to get it yeah. ready for, yeah. Unless you're going to record it like the year before. Before or yeah. something. Um, so she recorded it during the summer. She literally had the whole studio set up as if it was December. Mm -hmm. Had fake snow, like the whole shebang. And recorded this album. And it has become a standard. Mm -hmm. And All I Want for Christmas is You made history for her. Um, and gave her her 19th number one hit. So she is one song away from, I think, tying the Beatles um, for the most number one songs in history in the on, on Billboard Hot 100 nice. ever. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, that was my pick. It was, I just had to go, I had to pick a Mariah song. It was so much fun, too. Season. You guys definitely go watch the music yeah. video because we were dancing. Now, church that came through, honey. We were going off. It was we so much off. fun. It was so much fun. There's, was, there's something about, like, gospel music and like just oh it just ugh, you can't not move you can't not right, like right it's just you get you just yep 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 you gotta I can leave, I can leave. <laughs> yeah you gotta at least clap you gotta snap you gotta you gotta yes, do some yes. you got some praise the hand right the praise listen <laughs> cable's over here like this <laughs> 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 So much fun! It was so much fun. Um, like, I love big choirs like that in the back, the backing yeah. that you had and everything. Oh, oh. the background! They were like, gee, 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 gee. Yeah, they were I like, love it. I love wait, it. what I were they doing? The backgrounds were like, gee, 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 yeah, gee. At, one point, at one point, you were like running, man, like gee, gee, right, Jesus, right, Jesus, right. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, she was just like, gee, 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 gee. I was like, yeah. And they're like, Jesus. 
Yes! It was so good. We were sweating. Like we had our cardio workout. I know. It was mm. great. Yeah, mm. My aerobics are done for the day. Right. <laughs> for the day, girl. Mine's done for the week. <laughs> But yes, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it and make sure you go check out that video because it was yeah, it was everything. It was everything. But girl, we need to get the fuck into your song because <clears throat> I got questions. So mine was the second best Christmas song. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it was not. I if it actually. She didn't tell my song was the second best. Though. No, no. She knew mad if it was. So. I and took I took our theme to mean a very different thing. A disclaimer, real quick. Mm -hmm. This is no shade towards the artist. This yes. is no shade towards what they accomplished because we love them. Yes, we do. But everybody has but a moment. This song. And you know we are called out because you know family got to call family out. So you know we calling this group out because they from from where we are. So this is my judgment face. This. <laughs> No. This is mine. Yeah, yeah. Mine isn't as good. But, but. <laughs> yes, it is. But let me tell you. So, we, uh, I'm talking about, of course, the incomparable, the amazing, no, the new kids on the block. <laughs> Funky Funky Christmas is the name of the song that we listen to. So, the way that I took Broke Ass Holiday is, like, the immediate mm -hmm. thing that popped into my head was what is, like, the most busted awful song mm -hmm. what is the ho most horrible christmas song and there was a couple that i waffled about but i i knew i couldn't even like listen to them once and right. i'm amazed that i could get through this one because it was really bad. oh my god so yeah so let's i mean uh, there's almost nothing about this song out there just thinking so. about it is making me all hot and bothered but like, they, <laughs> they came out with a christmas album called merry merry christmas in 1989 also it was on an album it was um and i'm interested to hear the rest of the album i am not <laughs> i'm good i'm i'm okay um <laughs> i hate you so much <laughs> but from 1989 merry merry christmas uh let's see so who produced this wonderfulness so we've got peter work michael johnson danny wood maurice star and donnie Wahlberg. donnie maurice star written by maurice star and donnie Wahlberg. And yeah, and yeah, mm hmm yeah. And it was released on September nineteenth. Wait, isn't Maurice? Can can you click on his name? Because isn't Maurice Star from? Does it say? Boston-based music. Okay, that's Sorry, okay. New edition. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. I was gonna say Maurice Star is the dude that that helped create New Edition, and then, okay, got yeah. you, yeah, got yeah. you. So yeah, we had thoughts on it. Um, so the song itself, I mean, you I know, mean now it makes beat, sense why it sounded the way it did. Yeah, the beat was fun. You know what I mean? Like that bass line. Was everything. But then they were trying to do these weird accents. Like one of them was trying to be English, and another mm. one was trying to do a Santa accent. But I don't know what it was, and there was no Trey involved. I'm sorry. What? Who? Yeah. Listen. At the towards the end, especially, it turned into uh, yeah. You all know what it turned into. Very, you all know exactly what it turned yeah, into. It's very culturally appropriative. Uh, um, yeah. And again, like you know, it's not right. I, yeah. also, I you know, in their defense, they might. It, I mean, now that we know Maurice, no shade to him, yeah. but like now we understand. It was just a bad judgment call. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was. Like, anyone of any nationality, color, race, sexuality, gender, mm. whatever the fuck, can rap. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, please do it well, because that was not well. But, you know... Uh, <laughs> she was not play that was not well. You Look, y'all gonna get 100 from Kay. She don't play. She's gonna straight to the point. It was bad. Straight off the head, girl. It was bad. <laughs> Uh, what was it? It's now snowing and all we're over here ho ho hoing, I believe was. Yeah, I was like, you're doing back in time, like 12, 13, 14. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I yeah. was like, why are y'all hoing? Right? Uh, yeah, we hope so because no. Um, right. but. But yeah, that and I do. It's so funny because I I don't think I've heard that song probably since it came out when I was nine. Right. And like so. I thought about it because I was just like kind of looking up like bad Christmas songs or whatever right. and it came up. So I listened to like the first little bit of it, but I was like, oh, haha, ha, that'll be funny. But then when we listened to the end, I was like, wow. Yeah, I, um, okay, so 
my philosophy on when things like this happen, I and let me just say this right off the grip. Mm -hmm. I hear people say all the time in, in 2022, everybody's like, the world has become so sensitive. The world has become this. Like now mm -hmm. you can't you can't cough, you can't sneeze, you can't do this without a problem. Da -da -da -da. Listen. No. Okay. No. But you I, getting called out on your shit doesn't mean the world is sensitive. It right. means you're wrong. Right. And here's the thing. The reason that stuff like this has been going on for so long is because just it's just a simple answer. People didn't feel like they had the right to because they didn't think they'd be heard. Mm -hmm. Point blank, period. It's absolutely so a power thing. If there was if if what happened in 2020 specifically, all right, I, clearly this has been an ongoing thing. For God knows how long, yeah, but well, yeah. specifically just 2020, I'm sorry, people feel some sort of way when people bring 2020 up too, but that was when everything got brought out to light and there was no holding it back. There was no covering it up. There was no nothing. Like people are getting called out for everything now mm -hmm. because they haven't been able to do it for decades, mm -hmm. for centuries. Okay. So again, like there are people that are going to watch this and be like, okay, it's a little dramatic. Like it's not that serious. It's not that, that. well, okay. But that's also to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, you have to think about all the people who have felt ostracized or, you know, discriminated against or whatever the case may be and not had a voice. And now they do have a voice. So yes, now people are getting called out for it. And there are artists who are even admitting that they were part of the problem back then and that they just really were under the control of their label or manager or whoever. So, and then sometimes some of them just were that way and not everybody's going to admit to it. You know what I mean? That they had that mindset or thought that it was okay. So now in this day and age, yes, like we love new kids on the block, mm -hmm. but for those who are just like thinking like maybe, you know, it's not that big of a deal or thinking that it's this or that or it's not that bad or whatever at the end of the day you completely have the right to have your opinion yeah, there's yeah. nobody's telling you that you're wrong but at the same time we're gonna have our opinion too and it just it wasn't it like and here's the biggest thing i think that is the piece of this mm -hmm. is that if someone from yeah. a marginalized group tells you that they feel a certain way about something, that's it. That's the end of the fucking story. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. That's how they feel about it. Right. And they have every right to feel that way about it. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, and you don't get to tell them, no, you're wrong, especially if you're in a non-marginalized group. Do you know what I right. mean? Right. Like, if you're like... <laughs> Right. Because I've heard that, like, I've heard the sentiments too, like, just kind of being on this subject. I've heard the sentiments where it's like, um, oh, so, you know, uh, it's okay, you know, it's okay for you to call a Caucasian person a cracker, but we can't do something like that on the end of I'm the sorry, song. I'm sorry, excuse me, calling someone a cracker is nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. Nothing. No one ever, ever, right. ever lost a goddamn jog by because they were a cracker. Do right. You know what I mean? Right. Like no one ever got pulled over because they were a cracker. Right. No one. A de oh my god. Just, right. Just stop but it's it. just like. But it's just like you know. In songs, we could talk about you know me specifically speaking from a, a black experience. Like, oh, we could say this, this, and that about white people in songs, but they can't say it about us. Or da, 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 da. They can't do things like what they did on the end of their song. And it's like, well, the difference is that when black people do it, you know, we nine out of ten times get called out for it or called that we're hating and we're doing this and doing that. And for centuries, the things that have been happening, like what you heard on the end of the song or throughout the song, like that appropriation, all of that, that's been happening forever and we don't get to say anything about it and nobody defends us so like you know and now that people uh, like i said 2020 brought it up and now the people that have been defending us whether they're newer generations or they have been doing it for decades people from the civil rights era people from the sl before that okay people who have studied american history when it comes to slavery and stuff like that like all these people who have rooted for us now they're being heard and and have defended just the rights of what's right and what's wrong okay right. so like i'm sorry but like we love new kids on the block but that just wasn't it. No, it wasn't. It was not good. It, it was just wasn't it. wrong. And it's and not being dramatic. We, it's just an yeah. opinion. Yeah, and we just wanted to bring it up because, um, 
you know, when stuff like that comes up, the only way forward is to talk about it. Right. And to change it. Right. And to change. That's right. it. That's, that is the unless, epitome of growth. And unless you shine a light on something, yes. it's going to be in the dark forever. So. Yep. And that's evolution, too. Like, we can't just stay. Like, who wants, like, ev- like to evolve, you have to learn and then be able to grow from what you learn. And you also have to, as a person from the non-marginalized group of things, mm-hmm. you also have to learn, like, your internal stuff. Yes. And, like, figure that out. Because, yes. like, you know, you may hear that and go, oh, but it's blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, that's all your internal shit. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. you know, it's, and like, it's you have also, to, like, yes. you know. From a standpoint of somebody who doesn't necessarily have to deal with that on a yeah. regular basis. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, I thought, I, I was living for the choice, though. I thought yeah. it was hilarious. I was dying. Until the end. It was really funny. <laughs> it was. And then the end came up. And I was like, who is Trey? Yeah. And that's the other thing, too. Like, maybe that's... Maybe they have people in there, yeah. you know, yeah, entourage or true. whatever. I don't know. But, it wasn't don't just know that. that. It wasn't just that. <laughs> but it was just, like... There was, like, the random accents throughout the song. Like, and it, maybe it was the... It might have been made to be funny. Yeah. Well, I think, they, back I think then, they were trying to do... Like, the Santa thing and the English accent, I think they were trying I mean, to be funny. But, yeah, it was not good. <laughs> Just. And it was just it was a swing and a miss. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> I just... don't even know how much of a swing. It was like a punt and a miss. <laughs> <laughs> it was a placement. Yeah, a it, was a, it was a... They just placed the ball. A, eh, right. And a miss. <laughs> so, listen, we we love New Kids on the Block. Yeah, yeah, we do. And we do. This we is support no, you. Yeah. Right. This is, they've had a legendary career themselves. For sure. And... I had all the merchandise when I was younger. Right. And they've done so much for their own communities. Like, mm-hmm. like love, love, love them. But... You know, it's just something that, you know, needs to be brought up. And Mm -hmm. I'm sure if they haven't even addressed it, they probably will. Or, I mean, like, if it ever got brought up to them, they are the type of group that would, like, be like, you know what? You're we right. fucked up. But, right. You know, right. we fucked up. But you You're know right. what I'm saying? Maurice had us up in there. And we said we don't feel right doing this. And he was like, if y'all don't sound like new kids on the block, you better get it together. Right, right. Like, mm, so, Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna segue just and we're gonna get to the segue because this is broke ass holiday edition <laughs> of y'all hearing this. So I wanted to know from you <laughs> what is the craziest Christmas gift type of <laughs> whether it's to buy something for somebody or what's the craziest gift you've given or gotten or whatever, just uh-huh. in that theme of like have you ever done something so bootleg because you were broke? Like, I need to hear it. So, this took place many, many years ago. My brothers and I were very young. Okay. Uh, so, there was no money even involved. I, God, I couldn't have been more than, like, six or seven or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, we were like, what are we going to get mom? Blah, blah, blah. And so, I'm not sure if you know, because I'm sure there isn't many times that you have worn stockings or tights in your life. Mm-hmm. But they're stretchy. Mm-hmm. And so I decided, oh, look, I have this pair of really pretty Christmas tights that if we stretched them out, they'd fit mom. And so my brothers and I spent like a week stretching it every day until they were long enough to give to my mom. I don't remember anything about actually giving them to her, so I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Because again, I was really young. This is all that I remember thinking this was such a good idea. <laughs> Bitch, wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait. How? What? First of all, can she not see that they were not in the package? Like, what? Did you put them back? In- <laughs> I don't remember anything more. I really don't, because it was so long ago. It was what, like 35 ish years ago now, but yeah. Yep, I just remember doing it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna need a follow up on this because I am going to need to know what your. I know, I'll have to ask my mom. <laughs> She remembers it. I don't even, I, I truly don't remember what happened when we gave her the present or whatever. And I'm sure it was all like, I was definitely the ringleader because I'm the oldest. So whatever I kind of like said. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I'm at a loss 
for words because I would have never thought of that. I thought you were about to tell me like one time I bought my mom like a gift and like she opened it and it was like half gone or like something or like we bought her some perfume but it was like we ended up using some of it. <laughs> I cannot. I have never heard anybody like let me get her some tights, but we're just going to stretch out this, like, five or seven-year-old, well, we like... to a seven-year-old brain, you know you can't buy anything. And you're like... Oh. And then your brothers are helping. That's a... And they're young, so they don't even know. Oh, oh my... Um, I, I, <laughs> I'm done. So... I will t I'll follow up with my mom and see if she remembers. Yeah, because I want to know. If I can actually give it to her or what. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm oh. sure if it was given to her. It was like, um, I can't even remember because my dad was in the Navy, so he may not have even been home at that point for right. Christmas. But anyway. <laughs> I feel like I don't even know how I could come after that because that was pretty damn good. I know one year. Uh-huh. I was in hair school, mm -hmm. and if you know when you go to hair school, nine or ten times, especially if you're like you know living independently or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, it's expensive as fuck. Mm -hmm. I remember going to the hair school that I went to just to go was twenty four thousand dollars. Like wow. it was just you had to take like a whole college loan out, basically. <laughs> like it yeah, was ridiculous. And then all the supplies and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but uh, so money was extreme. Yeah. And um I will never forget. <laughs> we have our family get togethers mm -hmm. every year and what we used to do was secret Santa's. Mm -hmm. And now what we do is um dirty Santa. So like that whole oh. idea where it's like everybody brings a gift and it's always with the adults. Once you hit the age of 18 in mm -hmm. our family, 18 and up you're considered an adult. So mm -hmm. you don't get like regular presents. Mm -hmm. Like all the little kids get a bunch of presents each mm -hmm. and all that. Yeah, right. Once you hit a certain age, because once you're a teenager, you start getting money. And then once you hit like 18, 19, you're a part of our group, which means that you have to participate. Yep. Like if you want to come and eat, you got to bring a gift. Right. So we were doing it. And this was around the time where I was broke as Mm -hmm. and i literally me and my roommate we both went to um hair school together shout out to nate hey boo and um so me and nate went to hair school and like we were surviving off of ramen all this stuff the mm -hmm. whole time and when it came to go up to the holidays i was like yo what am i gonna do ciao do you know <laughs> That I had a bunch of just random hair products that I had from working hair shows, right? Mm -hmm. And used? used? Were they no, used? they were not used. They were not used. They were not used. That's okay. That's better. Right. That's better than I thought it was gonna be. So I put a candle, mm -hmm. and I put like the last three things I had, mm -hmm. okay, in it. Now, mind you, we're talking about a whole black family. Oh no, was it like all? Okay. <laughs> So there you go. So everybody's going up and they're like going up to pick presents out. Now, mind you, people had gotten like, because our family is big on Black Friday, right? Mm -hmm. So our family, like when we do Secret Santa and stuff, we have like, we'll be like a $50 limit, mm -hmm. right? Like and no one, no one falls it, basically. Um, no. So what they do is we are a family of Black, black um, Friday, shoppers. Friday shoppers. Yes. So we ended up get like I people are opening cure eggs mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. blenders and heated blankets and stuff. Tell me why my cousin walked up and picked up this damn bag. She was like, oh I can't wait to see what's in it because the small bag usually had gift cards yeah, or yeah, cash. Yeah, 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 yeah. When their papa pulled out a shampoo that was for straight silky hair. Pulled out a dry shampoo. <laughs> and pulled out a volumizer shampoo. <laughs> Two shampoos, okay, <laughs> and then pull out like something else that was just random. And when I tell you, the roof got quiet, and she was like, "Oh," and they all knew it was from me because my ass was the only one in hair school. So I was like, "Tee hee," like, like, <laughs> And I remember she was like, I don't want that child. When I tell you they passed that gift around, yeah, left it right, left it right. It became like I was like, I'm dead. 
I'm dead. And I was That's dying on the inside. Like, most people would have been, like, you know, embarrassed, sad, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. the case may be. And I was like, it is it what is, it is. It is. Yeah. We just, it is what it is. Yep. That's you know what I mean? That's all you can do sometimes. That was it. So, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that was... That was my little, like, you know, funny Christmas gift. But I did give a funny gift to my dad one year, mm -hmm. and it's still an inside joke. And it wasn't even for Christmas. It was for, I think, his birthday or Father's Day. I was young, and I went to the Christmas tree shop, and I was looking around, and I didn't know what to get my dad for his birthday. And if you know my dad, my dad is very, like, very military. We've talked about mm -hmm. this. Both of our dads were in service, and... When you've been in the service for 20 plus years, you just have this emotion where you're just kind of like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just who it, who you are. Yep. And I was shopping with my mom and I picked up this gift and I showed it to her and I said, I want to get him this. And my mom, her eyes got big and she tried not to laugh and she was like, okay. So she's dying, right? So I get a card and I fill it out. And inside the birthday card, um, so my dad gets the gift. He opens up the card first. And in the card, it, like, we used to always do joke cards, like, mm -hmm. yeah. crappy dad joke cards. And at the end of the, the card, I was like, hey, dad, I found something that looks like you. And I put, ha, ha, ha. I was like, love, Chris, a.k.a. And I, baby boy, because I'm the youngest. That's cute. My dad pulled out. Now, at the time, we had just kind of moved into a house mm -hmm. and my dad was big into gardening with my mom and all that like it was something they did together so i got him a rock <laughs> that had the face of an older man on it and i said dad it looks like you because the face was like this like grumpy old men yeah. it was like <laughs> and my dad looked at me he said christopher and my dad at the time was like literally like 39 40 like yeah, young yeah, yeah. It became the funniest thing. Got rock just sat there on the shelf, and we just would be like, "Yeah, yeah," like pointing at it like this, Dad. Like, and it was so ghetto and so ridiculous that I was like, nobody could ever know about this, and now everybody knows. But like, nobody could ever know about this. But it was just one of those like crazy like ghetto gift giving moments. Like, yeah. it, was just, it was ridiculous. Yeah, I know. I love I love picking up gifts for people. I know we've talked about this mm. before, but it's so much fun. And it like, is. It does start like forever in advance too. Although this year I'm really bad. I haven't done anything yet. Although I did order something that I think is going to end up being somebody's. But yeah. But whew, I have not even like thought about it. Me yet. either. I'm. Mm -mm. And, we um, we yeah. we are filming this ahead of time, by the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so we it's not the... quite the last minute. Right, you were not... thinking it is. Right. But it's still pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Well, yeah, yeah. But yeah. But it was it was it was a good one, and Christmas always turns out great, no matter yeah, how oh, it really does, how yeah. it is or whatever holiday you Especially celebrate. With the kids now too. Yeah gonna be amazing it is so let us know yes what <laughs> your favorite right. broke ass holiday song is and we would love to hear the different directions you go with it yeah let us know. some stories yeah uh, we want lots of stories listen yeah. we're gonna start building these stories up and we're gonna have to have like a whole little extra episode of like yeah, yeah. random stories yeah. sent in by anybody that supports us so yeah we'd love that um love it but we love you guys, yes, and we hope you have an amazing much. holiday. Yes, definitely. Stick and around for our holiday, holiday theme. That will be yes. coming up next week. So. Yes, next week is going to be a great one. It really is. So until then. Bye, guys. Bye. We love you.